This weekend, the Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra will be answering the age-old question, what is it about certain pieces of music that stay with you? This Saturday at 7.30 and on Sunday at 2 p.m., the Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra will be presenting unforgettable classical favorites. There will be, they will be performing musical masterpieces from the ballet, opera stages, and the ballroom. Here to tell us more about the concert, I am joined here over Zoom by Maestro Julian Pelicano, the Associate Conductor of our Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra. Hi, Julian. It's nice to see you here over Zoom. Oh, good to see you too. Always a pleasure. So I thought I would start out by asking you, as a conductor, what do you think is it that makes certain pieces pop and become immediate earworms, whether it be Brahms, Dvorak, Zeppelin? What is it? Uh, well, I think it's, not to get too technical, but um, these pieces are, have pieces that just stay with you. They have just that little bit of melodic something, that melody. It's usually a melody, right? That sticks with you. And uh, there's just something about certain pieces of music. Composer just got it right that day. Sometimes, you know, um, sometimes it's not exactly the piece, that, the piece that became the most famous, of course, is not the one that they expected or that they hoped. Uh, sometimes it's our least favorite piece. Uh, 1812 Overture of Tchaikovsky and Bolero by Ravel are two examples. Right, right. Um, but there is something about those pieces where the melody is just so right. Uh, mm. It's in the, To be honest, you can't really describe it. It's yeah. impossible to describe. This is music, right? It's yeah, really yeah. hard to talk about. Mm -hmm. The concert this weekend is a replacement of Le Coeur, Riel's Heart of the North concert. Last year, I was talking to James Manishin uh, about this idea that during the pandemic, the Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra very often had sort of backup plans in case concerts fell through. Was that the case for this uh, concert this, this weekend? Well, not really, actually. Um, we were, from the start of the year, um, really hoping that the second half of our season would... Uh, would pan out the way that we had expected. Of course, we could not uh, predict a Omicron wave that we've all just been going, we're all going through at the moment. Um, but to be honest, we've become so good at changing programs and finding some new alternatives that um, I think that we felt certain that even if things were to fall through, we'd be able to land on our feet. And um, the, the program, uh, for example, that we're presenting uh, this weekend is somewhat similar to a program that I really wanted to do last year, but ended up getting canceled during the third wave or whatever wave that oh, was right, right. <laughs> last <laughs> April. Um, so, uh, so we had, we kind of had a few, I, we always have a lot of ideas floating around. At least I can speak for myself. Uh, there's always a lot of things that I'd like to do. So um, I usually have a few backup plans uh, regardless of uh, what's happening. So when this concert uh, came about, I mean, on the program, there's music from the Viennese waltz masters, the Strauss family, but there's also music of Dvorak, Verdi, Puccini, Tchaikovsky, and others. Was it, who picked the literature? I guess, uh, how, how did the rep come about? How did the entire package for this concert this weekend come? Uh, well, you know, as with most of the, the concerts on our pop series, uh, except for those, of course, that have a guest artist, like, for example, Paul Schaefer, who's going to join us at the end of the season. Uh, usually I'm the one uh, choosing the repertoire uh, and uh, trying to think of music that, you know, will be great for our audience, but also that maybe we haven't played in some time. Things that, things that I'd like to do, pieces that I love. I should mention that the concert that we were supposed to do this weekend, uh, which was a fantastic multi-year project we were working on with the composer Neil Weisensel, um, it was just one of those things where it's a massive production and uh, was not possible really to do under the current circumstances. We could have tried to find a way to do it, but we decided that the, it wouldn't do the piece justice. We, the, that project needs to be done as it's intended, so right. we'll do it in another year. Uh, but back to uh, this weekend's uh, concert. Yeah, these are pieces that uh, mostly that I chose that, you know, that we that I, you know, a lot, one of the reasons I, I feel kind of selfish for this, it's called un Unforgettable Classical Favorites, but uh, it just turns out that a lot of these are my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, okay, it sort of leads me to the next question. Um, 
and I think I might know the answer to this. Uh, Dvorak wrote 16 Slavonic dances. You're playing the last two of the Opus 46 set, I think it is. Uh, why these two? Oh, um, well, I think, you know, the, the dances, they go quite well um, together from one to the next with the, uh, with the way the keys are arranged, the way Dvorak did that. And uh, so I wanted to find two uh, that I felt were exciting and, you know, also worked well together. So, yeah, uh, it's quite, uh, that, that's really the only reason. I mean, uh, th we could have played any two, to be honest. Right. They're all great. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, and there's also music on the program by the Strauss family. I mean, you've got the Blue Danube Waltz, you've got the Overture to the Flattermouse. Uh, are you a fan of music from the Strauss family? And what is it about the Strauss family that always draws audiences? I think, you know, uh, a big part of the Strauss's music that makes it so popular is that melodic invention that we were talking about before. They just, uh, especially Johann Strauss Jr., uh, but all the pieces really, they have that quality, just they're able to spin out melody after melody after melody that just stays in your head. Uh, the Blue Danube Waltz, I mean, even though uh, it's a waltz that we've we've heard many, many times in different contexts uh, and that the orchestra has played quite a bit, um, it's just one of those pieces that's almost a tradition in some sense, you know? And, um, and uh, we did a concert a couple of years ago that I created called Down, Down the Danube, and uh, and there was talk of a concert called Back Down the Danube, <laughs> and uh, and this this concert this weekend uh, maybe had a bit of that in it, uh, I suppose, uh, when I was conceiving it, and uh, so the Blue Danube Waltz stayed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 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 along the same tradition. I know another piece in the program is the Radetzky March, and again, it's just such a you know, it's it's a tradition if you're going to play music right. from the from the Strauss family. Mm -hmm. And the overture of Later Mouse, which we have not presented for quite some time really one of my favorite pieces. And if I can say, um, you know, that that opera was my introduction to uh, sort of one of my heroes, uh, conducting heroes, Carlos Kleiber, many, right. many years ago when I first uh, heard Flatermouse was also the first time I saw Kleiber conducting. So I uh, saw the film of the, I think it's a uh, Bavarian State Opera uh, film that was made of the, the opera. And it was just, so it has a kind of a special place for me as a conductor as well. Oh, that's 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 great. Um, on the program, uh, you've invited Winnipeg soprano Andrea Lett to perform. Have you? How did you hear about her? And have you conducted her before? Tell us about how that part of the concert came about. Yeah, of <clears> course. <throat> um, Andrea and I have known each other for some time. Um, I, I can't. To, I don't know when the first time that I was introduced to her singing was. I know, I remember uh, working with her uh, quite some time ago when she was one of the uh, finalists in the McClellan competition uh, with the symphony and just being really struck by her, not just her incredible vocal quality, the quality of her voice, but also her agility, her musicality, her stage presence. And, um, I, and we're always trying to find ways to, to work together. Uh, of course, she's super busy and she's, before the pandemic, she was not always in Winnipeg. So she, she kind of travels from opera company to opera company doing all kinds of various projects that a young up and coming singer would. Um, but um, on this program, uh, you know, thinking about uh, a lot of the music on the program is dramatic music in some sense. Uh, so the, the drama of uh, ballet, of course, we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about that, the, the drama of opera, and also, so Flatermouse, and then uh, where Andrea fits in is presenting three uh, wonderful and very famous arias. And um, so having a singer to come and not just, to have us not just present overtures, the musical examples, but actually parts of the opera as well. Andrea was the first singer that came into my mind and luckily she was available. Mm -hmm. you, were, you just touched on it there uh, a little bit about the ballet. Uh, it's a, I always think, when an orchestra gets to play Tchaikovsky, it's always going to be a, a, a fun show. Uh, I know the RWB is recording Sleeping Beauty with uh, the Royal Winnipeg Ballet, but uh, there's also a piece on this weekend's program from Swan Lake. Can you tell us about that? Sure. Um, Tchaikovsky, mm. um, like he did with all of his, uh, the three ballets that he composed, uh, Swan Lake, 
uh, Sleeping Beauty and the Nutcracker, uh, created a suite of the music from those ballets for concert performance. So these are he extracted what he felt were the most popular and most the strongest musical pieces, put them together to be played in concert. Um, and, um, you know, Swan, ever since um, starting to work with the RWB in 2017 and then becoming their principal conductor in 2019, uh, ballet music for dancers and music for ballet has really occupied a lot of my uh, artistic time. And just the way that I think about the repertoire and the way I think about conducting and the way I think about drama through music has been molded in many respects through my work with the dancers. And um, so this music, Swan Lake, uh, we were supposed to do Swan Lake last year, which of course then we recorded. Uh, and I suppose uh, maybe it was a bit of nostalgia for me not having conducted those performances live, wanting to get back to the music and also you know, having spent some time with Sleeping Beauty this year in preparation for the recording uh, that's upcoming with the RWB. Um, it just felt right to me. And of course, maybe a little bit selfish on my part, but I hope that everyone will forgive me because it's just some of the most beautiful music and some of the most craftily written music that Tchaikovsky ever produced. It sure is, it sure is. Um, my understanding is there is a live, there's going to be a live audience for this weekend's concerts. Can you talk a little bit about seating capacity or audience capacity and social distancing for the concert and people can see it online, right? That's correct. Um, I, we are following whatever the, the newest guidelines from the province uh, as far as uh, public gathering. So I, I believe that's uh, half of the capacity of the, of the venue. Uh, I hope I'm not wrong about that, but I think that's what I heard. And uh, all, of the, all of the social distancing and masking measures that have been in place since the beginning of the season are still in place. Uh, when you do come to the concert hall, uh, and I've been in the audience several times this year when I'm not conducting, uh, you'll notice that uh, it, at Winnipeg Symphony concerts, uh, groups of uh, audience members are distanced at least uh, two meters and sometimes more, of course, because the concert hall is quite a large place. And um, yeah, so uh, hopefully, you know, uh, in the current uh, climate, people will feel safe uh, to come to our concert because, and we're hoping that because, you know, the, our audience makes such a huge difference having a live audience in the hall. That's the one thing that, uh, that we've really realized as musicians over the past two years is what the audience brings to a performance. Of course, we can't take that for granted. Uh, it's just so special. Uh, and I can I can guarantee that the symphony staff and the concert hall staff are doing absolutely everything in their power to make everybody uh, be as safe as possible while they're in the audience. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll wrap the conversation up this way. Aside from conducting your favorite pieces, what is the one thing that you're really looking forward to about this weekend's concert that sticks out in your mind? Like, what, what it, is there a piece or uh, what is it about this weekend's concert other than conducting your favorite music that you're looking forward to most? Yeah, well, um, I can say, you know, if I, the very first thing, there's a lot of things, but the very first <laughs> thing that comes into my mind is there's one piece on this program that I've been waiting to perform at the Winnipeg Symphony for a while. And it's actually been quite some time since they've performed it themselves. That's the overture of Verdi's opera, Nabucco. Nabucco, okay. And um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a piece that I've always, always loved. Uh, the opera is really unique in that it was Verdi's kind of breakout opera when it is written in the 1840s. And uh, before that he had, he had already composed some operas, but this is the one that brought him to uh, national and inter international fame. And um, it's, it's also an interesting piece for a, a number of other reasons. Uh, there's a, because of the chorus of the, the chorus uh, in, of the Hebrew slaves, Va Pensiero, which has become an, the second Italian national anthem uh, right. in many respects and is important uh, uh, for a, a variety of other very complex political reasons, uh, but it's just a, a beautiful song as well. And uh, it's just one of those pieces that, again, I've been waiting to perform. We finally had an opportunity to do it and uh, really looking forward to that and, and uh, performing it with my colleagues on stage this weekend. Julian, uh, the concert this weekend sounds great. I'm really looking forward to it. Once again, uh, the concert is happening this Saturday night at 7.30 and Sunday at 2 p.m. Julian, thanks again for taking the time to chat with me today. Absolutely, Chris, thank you.
For our Classic 107 listeners, the concert is this Saturday night at 7.30 and this Sunday at 2 p.m. Both concerts take place at the Centennial Concert Hall. For more details, you can go to wso.ca or classic107.com and just click on that events tab. Julian, thanks again. Thank you.